Let's be honest guys, Mount Hydral as a raid is not the most interesting or engaging raid there is. But the bosses in the raid itself are actually unique and there's a lot of different little things you can do to parse them or just basically increase your DPS. Now, we're going to be stuck in this raid for quite a long time. There's basically a whole nother half phase where we get ZA and we're going to be stuck basically still doing Mount Hygel. So to make things kind of unique, you're going to want to switch things up and think of different ways that you can encounter these boss fights to make sure you can do the most DPS as possible. With keeping things fresh in that spirit in mind, I think it's time for us to make a change ourselves. So shout out to Mr. Vandalay who gifted the subs to get us to the sub goal to make this happen. Ho <laughs> ho, it's a me, Mustache Sartha. And in the spirit of a new raid bosses, let's check out some new raid bosses themselves. That's right, today's video is sponsored by our friends over at Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is like the mobile version of the game we all play and love every single day. It's got PvP, massive PvE events with clans that resemble guilds, and over 600 champions to utilize to make up your group comp. You're going to take your party to fight some unique bosses, like the dungeon boss, the Guardian of the Void Keep, Malik Kavar. The main trick to this encounter is dealing with all of the poison he puts out. You'll need to put together a team with shields and healing to counteract the damage, or you'll need champions with the ability to purge debuffs directly. If you can cleanse the debuffs on this boss, you'll be able to take him down and grab some sweet void potions to ascend your champions. Raid's got a ton happening this month with a fresh rotation of the clan boss Hydra and a special Valentine's Day event with a new legendary champion. This is the best time to get started playing Raid, and if you click my link in the description or scan my QR code here on screen, you'll get cool bonuses. We're talking a free epic champion, Rector Drath, 200k silver, one energy refill and one XP boost, and one ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in the game. You'll be able to find all these goodies right here as soon as you log in, so download Raid Shadow Legends and get gaming today. Okay, so today we're going to use my VOD in the background. I had a pretty okay raid RNG wise, but all of my openers were all bad and you'll actually see this throughout the whole raid. The first thing you want to take note of is just be in position and be ready to fight this boss. Now in Mount Hydel, this is the one only boss, the first boss, Rage Winter Chill, that actually is not a demon. And because of that, that means you're actually still using your normal elixirs. One thing to really note here, and this is actually to note throughout most of Mount Hydel, is that this is a very RNG heavy raid and to boss parse, most of the bosses are gonna be under two minutes, if not all of the bosses under two minutes, meaning you're gonna bloodlust and use all of your cooldowns all at once, of course, but technically it doesn't actually matter exactly when you use them. So it means you can kind of utilize a little bit of an advantage by actually using your, your cooldowns, especially as a hunter, during something like a sleep or a freeze effect as long as it's fully during a bloodlust now as a general idea you're almost always going to bloodlust and use your cooldowns right away if so you're going to want to get instantly double lusted if you're in a giga parse group and you're getting a double lust if not don't worry about it but right after the first bloodlust ends you're going to want to actually use the second a good advantage of using your cds early is actually on this fight you can get all of your cooldowns out before he even casts death and decay Okay, and that means you definitely don't have to move during your actual CDs, although you might have to move during Bloodlust itself. You can also wait until after Death and Decay goes out if you really want to, but the biggest things here on this fight are basically just hope you don't get Death and Decay because you are going to lose DPS having to move out of that and really hope you don't get frozen. And I definitely wouldn't wear a PvP trinket on this fight. It's pretty rare that you get frozen and it's just really bad RNG, so just kind of shoot for the stars if you're ever going for parsing you're always kind of shooting for the stars so don't really worry about that just hope you don't have to move and then you'll get a better parse if you don't Moving straight on to Anna Theron, and this is another fight which is similar to all the other ones where you're kind of hoping you don't have bad RNG, and this means you're hoping you don't get slept. Now there's a unique item you can use called the Sulfuron Slammer that allows you to actually kind of cheese the sleep effect. What it does is actually every three seconds it ticks you for like four damage, and this damage will knock you out of the 10 second sleep. 
The good thing about this is it's off GCD. The bad thing about this is it does reset auto shot weapon swings. So basically this means you need to do it right at the beginning of a weapon swing or in between a steady shot and a auto shot if you're using a hunter. So you only need to worry about doing this or spamming this whenever the sleep is off of cooldown or you can just pray you don't get slept. That's really the best way to do it in all honesty is just hope you never get slept. Again, you wanna start this fight in position and ideally, usually you're gonna use your cooldowns again at the beginning with Lust, but it might actually be better to time your cooldowns with one of the sleeps just to make sure you don't get slept. Hope you don't get an Inferno directly dropped on you like I do in this raid and hope you can just sit there and blast. This raid is kind of about this just like glass cannon, hope you don't have to move sort of ordeal. Now there's a little bit more nuance with Kazragal than the first two fights. Again, of course, you're kind of hoping you don't get too unlucky. If you keep getting selected to get the mana drain, then you're gonna kind of lose out on DPS. And the second thing, the big thing really for everyone that's trying to parse this fight is just actually go and meet the boss stop fighting this boss all the way where thrall is don't kite him all the way over there before you actually start dpsing because it's a massive massive dps loss for you to just have all downtime while this boss is just walking and trying to get in position your tanks aren't really building threat and you're not really dpsing so ideally you want to meet this boss and the next boss as soon as possible and just basically engage the encounter from there obviously a really big advantage for you is using your elixir of demon slaying and make sure that you're gonna use a demonic rune if you think this fight is gonna be a little bit longer than usual fights i would absolutely opt for a fell mana pot over a haste potion actually so if your fight lengths are a little bit longer i would hard advocate for a fell mana pot instead of a haste pot because these things just will last you for a long time obviously and it's the best bang for your buck giving you as much mana as possible over a normal mana pot but again Again, dark runes are absolutely your friend here and just try not to run out of mana i choose to be in range of my totems but kind of off on my own where if i run out of mana then i'm not going to hurt anyone but i'm kind of just pumping and going for it to be honest Ascalor is the next of the RNG heavy encounters, and this is another example where Hyjal can just choose you to get owned. Make sure you're in position for the boss as soon as it's being pulled, so you can just start DPSing right away. That's something I kind of messed up on this week, and it's something I messed up on on, on a lot of fights actually this week. Another thing you're gonna wanna do is, again, CD early, and with Bloodlust, you might actually get a second CD if your kill times are a little bit slower on this boss. The next thing to worry about is your pet, actually. Your pet will definitely take a lot of fire damage if you have a melee heavy composition. And so this is not necessarily the best for you, but just make sure you're ready to tonk the pet if anything goes wrong. Another thing to worry about on this boss is of course, if you get RNG'd and chosen for the mark for death, and then you just basically are gonna die. There's nothing you can do about it. Watch out for the stun. If you're a melee DPS or if you're melee weaving, this isn't really a melee weave friendly fight for hunters, then make sure you are out of range of the stun on this fight. It's a 12 yard range and it's kind of annoying, but you can actually use a thap and resist two of these suns if you time them perfectly. So that's like the big brain play for anyone who is a melee here is just use a fap and just keep pumping. And if you're a caster, it's important to know that the silence can be full resisted. So if you have a little bit of shadow resistance gear, maybe that'll help you. Just make sure a priest puts shadow res up on you. That's really the only thing you really need to worry about. Then try not to move the boss too much. Your tank pretty much should never really have to move. The melee will just move from side to side, just dodging the fires. And the last thing you're gonna kind of wanna choose for yourself actually, is trying to decide if you're gonna outrange the fire actually, the rain of fire, so then you never have to move, or if you're gonna be in range of your totems instead and actually just hope you don't have to move from fire. Anytime you ever have to move, that's downtime, that's a loss of DPS you ideally are always just kind of standing still, which is something I kind of generally opt for, or you can just outrange the actual fire itself, so you will never ever have to move unless you get the actual bad RNG. Now onto the big bad, our boy Archie. Well, Archimon, again, is another demon, and ideally, you want to mount up to get into position. You can see in the background, I'm gonna have a terrible opener here, because our actual main tank decided to not run in. He got yelled at, but 
whatever. Positioning is massively key on this fight. Ideally, you're off on your own so that you never get knocked back and you never have to worry about anything. The hope here is again to have good RNG so you don't actually get the knockback, the air burst, so you never really have to be out of the fight itself. You are going to almost always have to move for fires. There are some situations where you get super lucky and never actually have to move for fires, but that's a very rare situation. If you can get a fear ward, that would be huge for DPS because you actually save any time with downtime waiting for a tremor to tick. So if you can get a fear ward, make sure you're trying to get that. And then another thing you want to watch out for is is if your pet gets into the fires. So this is a really big fight where your tank's positioning actually means quite a bit. Overall, you will do a lot more damage if the tank moves the boss less. You don't have to worry about doing any DPS after the 10% happens where he goes off into his second phase and he's basically immune for a while. He's gonna die and Warcraft Logs cuts that off anyways now. Another thing to note though is pets. There's two things. Pets can get into the fire and it totally sucks. So make sure that you are watching your pet and your tank is watching where pets are positioned. And two, when he goes into phase two or whatever the last phase is where you basically beat him at 10 percent he will bubble everyone and make them immune to all damage but he doesn't do that for pets so taunt your pet instantly or else it's gonna die no matter what so just taunt your pet you can summon it again and start attacking the boss but it doesn't really matter anymore the dps is already gone and the boss fight is already over a big thing again if you want to get cheeky here try to get a fear ward and make sure you're standing off on your own you really don't want to get hit by anyone else that is getting airburst it is a massive frustration and i actually was really annoyed because this was gonna be the rank one parse most likely so it happens just hope you have good rng on this fight and the least amount of movement on this fight is huge for your damage and that's literally it guys this raid is absolutely the most rng dependent raid for parsing ever pretty much every single boss has some mechanic that can pretty much just put you out of the fight if it decides to happen to you so you pretty much are just going in here hoping you get lucky and it doesn't happen anyways final reminders again the first boss is the only one that is not actually a demon so use demon slaying on everything else and then most of these fights if not all of them should be underneath two minutes so using your cooldowns technically doesn't really matter when you do it as long as it's fully with a bloodlust and ideally when you don't have to move Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you all get all those 99s out there. I had some pretty good gear in this run, but I actually played a little bit poorly. So hopefully we go in next week and I can take that rank one spot again. And either way, we're having a ton of fun here. Thanks for watching again, guys. Shout out to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring the video. And I'll see you guys all on the stream right there or something. But if you want any more Hunter content, of course, make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys all on the next one.